New York is gray, but Queens is sunny because we have in studio writer Jackie Simplis Jury. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, thank you for coming on to Regarding. Welcome to our amazing, huge studio. (laughs) So much space. Yes. So, you have a show currently running at Lincoln Center, LCT3, called Mary Seacole. True. Please tell us a little bit about that. (laughs) No lies. It is. Can I just say Lincoln oh, yes. Center? Lincoln Center? I mean, LCT. Lincoln Center. 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 Lincoln Lincoln Center. Center. You got to yeah. walk past that fountain. It yeah. feels kind of amazing to walk past the fountain mm. and to sort of like walk through tourists' photos and be like, sorry. Got to get my show. Yes. I love yeah. moving tourists. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are so many of them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, in the world. The play, and there's tourists in the play. The play um, is uh, inspired by a Jamaican nurse who's a contemporary of Florence Nightingale. So she was doing stuff in like the late 1800s. Mm-hmm. And uh, her name's Mary Seacole, and she went and like cured people all over the world and um, like specifically in the Crimean War. Mm-hmm. And so it sort of is about immigration, or I don't know what it's about. It's about this woman, it's about mothers and daughters, it's about immigration and caring and who we ask to care for the mm-hmm. people that we have in our families mm-hmm. and also like what we, what we ask of those people who are caring for the people in our families to do with their own families while they're caring for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's, and then, but it's crazy. It's a little crazy. As, as all your plays are. As it turns out. How long have you been like thinking about this play? Where was sort of the impetus of writing it? I, I guess I've been thinking of it for a while. Like I, I, I first um, like got a commission to write the play like four or five years ago, mm. and um, started like r- like read the autobiography then, and was like for a, a long time trying to figure out how to turn it into a play because it's like this like Victorian ish like um, like someone writing about themselves. So there's only one voice, mm-hmm. and so I like. I was interested in her story, but I couldn't figure out how to make it a play and not just like an interesting historical monologue. Right. Um, mm. And so it's it's and so like it was sort of once like trying to introduce more contemporary women that it became more of an actual play rather than just like notes right. for a long time. Can I ask with the uh, with the jumps in time period, like what was your what was your like research or preparation for that? Just in, in being able to go through all those different times. Oh yeah, it was like all the historical stuff was like. Um, like reading, <laughs> like reading this autobiography and reading about mm-hmm. the Crimean War and sort of reading about, um, like reading letters that Florence Nightingale wrote to her brother about Mary Seacole and like reading all this stuff. Rejection yeah. letters, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then he also, she also like, mm-hmm. yeah, said some nasty things to yeah. her family about her. But it's cool. <laughs> um, it's everyone says nasty things about everyone else all the time, That's true. including like nurses in the 1850s. Yes. They were just Twitter beefing. Yeah, <laughs> like slow mo yeah. Twitter beef. But I love don't it. Don't you don't you subtweet me, bitch. Don't you subtweet me. <laughs> like a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and but then like with the more contemporary stuff, it's like some of it um, definitely comes from like uh, listening to women in my family. Some mm-hmm. of it comes from observing women in New York City. I spend a lot of time in parks feeling a little mm-hmm. bit like a child molester. Like <laughs> being like at playgrounds without children and like having people be like, wait, why are, are you, <laughs> are you here to kidnap someone? And I was like, I'm just listening to what you're yeah. saying and writing it down, that's not creepy. Yeah, yeah. that's not weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, but yeah, and like, um, like that, that, that's, <laughs> but, you, but you'll know what that means if you see the play because yeah. uh, we we got to see it yesterday and mm. now that you bring it up i'm like oh i see how it all connects now so it sits with that. you yeah. i'm uh, and i mean this is the highest compliment you know when like there's there's so many pieces of theater that you can just kind of like wait what did we see what was it about who was in it but like yeah. yours has been like it's just been ruminating and just you know simmering in my mind. I I really loved it. Oh, that's really kind. No, you're yeah. th- thank thank you thank you thank you for that. It's been a, it was a really good room. Like the um, I feel like with everyone like with Liliana who directed it mm-hmm. and all of the actors like and the designers they've been like sitting in previews and in tech and 
rehearsals, like kind of like figuring out how things weave together. And mm -hmm. it's it's been like really super collaborative and really generous in a way that like things often aren't. Like people say that things are going to be collaborative. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, then they, like, and then it's like, yeah, but like do what I want you to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And this has been a lot of give and take and it's been really great. So the stories that you tell are unique and probing, especially the way you tell them. So we're curious, like what what is your process when you write a play? Because you, you do have a very, very unique voice. Oh, yeah, um, thank you. You're welcome. I'll, I'll take that, thank you. <laughs> Um, I wish I had like a specific process. I feel, <laughs> I feel like I just write things really, really slowly and mm. over time of like sort of like mm. going back to it and going back to it and like sort of seeing what still sounds interesting and like what sounds less interesting after like spending a little bit of time away from it. Um, and like asking other people their opinions sort of like constantly and in like a slightly terrifying way, I think mm -hmm. for collaborators. Mm. Um, but I I, I, uh, I really feel like it's like trying to be like annoyingly rigorous with things that are silly and funny and weird and mm. crazy, mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. trying to like have all of these different things like come together to make a point. Mm. Like I, I, I feel like the, um, with this sort of like writing and then leaving and then returning and writing and leaving and then returning, I guess that is a process. It like helps, um, it, it means that the things that are that remain are there for sort of more than one reason, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, I guess like that's that's something that feels like consistent. That makes a lot of sense. Does it? Yeah. yeah. That was just seeing, just you know. Well, this is actually one of the first interviews where we get this. We saw the our guest yeah. play. Usually, uh, you know, the guest has a play coming out later in right. the month, so we just sort of go on what we assume or the research I've done. Uh, but in this case, now that we've actually seen Mary Seacole, it's very evident, sort of like the chess pieces you put, and then like yeah. what's left over, and then mm -hmm. what all, you know, how it all coalesces at the end, and, or to, you know, sort of. to, throughout, throughout <laughs> rather, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Anyway, that makes sense. <laughs> cool. Great. <laughs> no, I I, didn't. I agree with you because I feel like, and I, I I mean this in a very complimentary way. There are parts where it doesn't exact like it's not a linear kind of thing yeah, no. and i like that because i feel like you know your life isn't your life isn't linear like there are disjointed parts of your life of your everyday of things that don't make sense with like your morning doesn't make sense with your job that doesn't make sense with your passion and so right. like that it that's reflective for me like it, yeah. I, I i jumped into that reality that was yeah. great yeah because there's something where it's like if you're on the way to work and you hear a song that reminds you of your uh, prom, like it doesn't like it doesn't have to like make sense with your day, but it's still like a fact. And so you're like, oh, mm -hmm. now I'm going to work and I'm thinking about prom, and now I'm thinking about like that 17 year old kid mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. seeing my, like it just like things. Our lives aren't linear. Yeah, like, you know? yeah. yeah. Oh, you were too. You, yeah, that was so eloquent. <laughs> Play <Playwrights>. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, was that was lovely. <laughs> so, from a 2014 New York Times piece, uh, Kirk Columbus, the Trinity Rep Artistic Director, has yeah. quoted a saying with you, I joked with Jackie, can your next play be a family drama around the kitchen table? And she said, under no circumstance. And then five years later you wrote, Fairview, or rather that came out. <laughs> and that is not necessarily a kitchen drama, that it, but is ostensibly right. a kitchen comedy or sitcom. Also, that's going up at New York Theatre uh, Theater for a New Audience. Yes, Tifana. In the summer, Tefana in the summer, summer which we time. have to mention. Ooh, in right. Brooklyn. In Someone Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Hi. So go check that out. What was the impetus for, for, for Fairview? I just wanted to mess with Kurt Columbus. There you go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you, heard you heard that? You heard that? I'm coming. We are now. We got to tag Kirk Columbus right now. <laughs> yeah. See what you did? <laughs> so you'd be like, what did I do yeah. to you? I haven't done anything bad. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny. I like forgot about that uh -huh. quote. And then I was like, oh. Well, that maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe if you can talk about like what your mentality was then and then five years later, like how that shifted or not necessarily shifted, but I guess what changed in you where you were like, you know what, perhaps I will revisit this sort of thing. Part of the reason that I was a little bit late <laughs> coming here was because I was um, having a uh, set design meeting with Mimi Lian and Sarah Benson. Oh, oh dope, dope, dope. And um, like they, before any text of that play or before like the idea of it even existed, 
it was like I knew that I wanted to work with Sarah and I wanted to work with Mimi mm -hmm. and that like they also wanted to work with each other. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> and so um, it's like it's when we were having our earliest discussions about the play, it was like this idea of surveillance and race and like people watching people mm. and um, how like eventually like how implicit bias changes the way that you um, watch someone's behavior and judge it. But like, um, and so we were sort of, we like Sarah and I were doing all kinds, we were reading all this stuff. We were watching police interrogation videos for a while and like watching oh, like shit, interrogation yeah. tactics. Right. And like, it, it, it wasn't until, um, and so for actually for like a full year and a half, that play was like, um, the whole middle of it was like this like weird office drama where these like people worked in like uh, like a version of this NSA sort of mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. like and they were like listen and like we didn't know what they were listening to but we we're like there's like a panopticon and they're mm -hmm. like they're just it's like the office set inside of a police state mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like they're like weird and dead inside right and then that became like less and less <laughs> interesting. <laughs> And, and so it wasn't until um, figuring out that um, it was like really this this one book um, that Sarah and Mimi and I read by this woman named Simone Brown, Dark Matters, um, and it's about like uh, surveillance and black bodies in space mm. through time. And so there was something about that that where it really clicked in that we needed to show something very normal and then show it be disrupted, mm -hmm. being disrupted by people who were watching and judging it. And so like mm. the idea of like, this is such a long answer, but like figuring out what felt normal in a theater was like something that was like naturalistic slash sitcom-ish. Mm. Mm -hmm. And like, that's how that came about. And it's like it. completely random way. Got it. Um, like after like all of this other like weird, like theoretical got architecture was got like it, put it. up. And so it was like the, um, the play of the beginning of the play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, was like one of the last pieces of it to come into place. Mm. It was weird. So that's how that happened, kind of. Got it. it was, it's, it's super circuitous. Yeah. But it all, I guess, it's one of those things, I never do it, and then you just find yourself there. No, and it was like, for everyone in the process, it was like, so, like Mimi had never designed a set with a couch on it before. Oh, interesting. Mm. Like she's like not, like she does these like crazy yeah, huge yeah, yeah. architectural things, so she was like, I looked at this Samuel French ground clearance <laughs> and like yeah. that felt really weird uh -huh. and it was like everything like right. that like I never wanted to do right. and like huh. Sarah Benson had never really directed like naturalism before mm -hmm. or mm. and so she was like it's like melodrama but turned down I guess right. <laughs> and she was like I don't really know how to do this uh -huh. and like I I like put in all of these and it, like I know that you know like there are certain things that are like new play mm -hmm. languagey things or like um oh, a phone call is happening mm -hmm. and it's going to give me exposition that I'm mm -hmm. now going to like deliver right, to the right. audience. Like all right, these right. like cringy uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. And so we're all like, and the actors were like, I'm not in plays like this normally. Right, this right. is so weird. Uh -huh. And so like everyone had their own, like everything that I ran away from in grad school, I'm now doing in this play, mm. in the services of something else. Mm -hmm, so I'm mm -hmm, able to do it, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it was a really weird process. That's yeah. awesome, fascinating. Yeah. fascinating. Now swim in it, <laughs> <laughs> go, lean in. You mentioned that you, your director, and your set designer all read the same book. Was this uh, was this on purpose or was this? Yeah. That is so, it I've really never great. heard of that before. I've never heard of, of of the of that of people reading the same book for that that's I'm that's that blows my mind that's incredible like collaborative research and it like different wonderful. interpretations yeah no that's what a what a great way to inform what you're doing yeah it was like it I've never done it before either but and it was like um, I think Sarah dr drove it a lot but she mm -hmm. would sort of be like maybe like because I would be like I don't have a script yet I'm so freaking yeah. out mm -hmm. and so she was like what if we just like meet like once every two three months mm -hmm. we have like a little reading group. We like read wow. stuff that's interesting, and you have a stuff. common no, a right. common yeah. language because right. yeah. you you have the same foundational information. Like yeah. that's that's an, I've just I, I was I was struck when you said that. That's it incredible. It sounds like Fairview it really informed your. Yeah. Fairview book club. I want. Can I join? <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will sign up for that. No, it was great. June 2, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> In Brooklyn. 
So uh, while we're on the topic of Fairview, it is a critical exploration, as you said, of like sort of white voyeurism of blackness or black bodies, or I guess black media, yeah. perhaps. And that it's also super crazy and super wild. Um, and it pushes a lot of theatrical boundaries, thematic boundaries. And I was wondering, during the development of all this, did you ever feel like, uh, feel any resistance from within yourself or even from outside? Or do you feel like you were just like, fuck it? I like mostly was a little bit fuck it ish, mm -hmm. and like I think that I, um, like I, this sounds like such um, like sucking up mm -hmm. or whatever brown nosing, but like I really wouldn't have written that play without Mimi and Sarah, mm. and I feel like they were um, so generous and like so, oh like. <laughs> Um, for a little while, and like not to, um, we kept we kept on coming, um, f trying to figure out this like gesture that ends the play. Mm -hmm. And for a little while, Sarah was like, "What if we make some of the audience go and watch the end of like the importance of being earnest, like in the basement, and mm -hmm. they just have like a totally different, or like, mm -hmm. what if we make them like leave the theater and like go outside?" And I was, and there was something about like her flexibility, flexibility mentally, and mm. also like willingness to like push boundaries and like yeah. have like deal with like upset patrons mm -hmm. in a weird way there was no resistance in the development of the play from the people that i was making the play mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. which was wow. it's just rare yeah I think. yeah, yeah and absolutely. feels really lucky and i feel like i mean and also i guess if you're going to do it soho rep would be like the perfect place to do it too mm -hmm. yeah yeah because i don't know i mean I'm not gonna say, but a certain theater company had to write uh, an apology letter to subscribers at one point um, a few years ago for a Pulitzer Prize winning play. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I just, like, <laughs> so, insane. Yeah, but you know, that's Ooh, what I mean. This, this tea I just is feel so like, hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know but what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, I, there's just, there was an delicious. artistic director who had to write an apology letter. Had to? Wrote. Wrote. Yeah, exactly. It's piping. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm just saying. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just really interesting because, I, you know, I remember sitting there and I'm just like, oh shit, like this is really happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, oh damn. Okay, cool. People are interesting. Artists are interesting. People that come to see plays have mm -hmm. brains. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, they're. The, the like resistance and like wanting to have everyone do something that's already been seen before. Mm -hmm. I, I just like honestly don't understand why that exists. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's like not the smartest thing I've yeah. ever said, but it's true. No, I think it's important to absolutely, you know, believe in the integrity of intelligence of your audience. Yeah. You know, why dumb it down? Don't no, no. Like bring it up. That's why yeah. that's that's what you come to see art for, to elevate you, not to you know, make you like, no, no, no. You did the, you, sounds absolutely right move. And like, if you're an audience member, you don't want to think that the artistic staff is like, oh, we right. have a bunch of dummies coming in. We right, have right. to like, make sure that we like, spoon feed them mm -hmm. exactly. Like, that's just not the, that's not really what anyone wants to be doing. We are proud to present a presentation about the Herero of Namibia, yeah. formerly known as Southwest Africa, from the German Sudwest Africa between the years 1884 to 1915. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! How was that? So that play uh, set the foundation for a lot of your work with regards to theme and style, and you found a good balance be in, in what we think between like what's academic and what's accessible. So, do you consider that kind of your aesthetic to have to actually to have that that elevated intellectual stuff with, with still things that make it relatable? Oh. And do you feel that you, do you even find that that is a sort of foundational work for your style as well? I, I don't know, mm -hmm. to be totally honest, but there there is something um, where I'm I feel complimented by that <laughs> description. Because um, I, I I think and maybe it's because my my husband is an academic and I um, uh, feel inferior to him because <laughs> he like reads like real like hard books with long titles and little <laughs> print like all the time. Many leather bound books. <laughs> exactly. It's like that looks long. Uh, yeah. And so, but there is something where it's like, I, I, I feel like for, for me to be able to like take myself seriously enough to write something silly, which is like a stupid thing to do. Mm -hmm. 
like there has to be some sort of like theoretical underpinning that's like mm. like that, that's outside, that, that comes from outside of me that like um, is like interacting with some sort of like person who's much smarter who's written something very rigorous about the same thing like that help that like frees me up to sort of like interact with it mm -hmm. rather than just sort of being like these are my feelings like mm -hmm. I like I, I don't um, I'm like too neurotic maybe to mm -hmm. be able to like write that way. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and so I, yeah, I do try, I like do always like read academics-ish stuff around the stuff that I'm trying to write mm -hmm. plays around, but then like I'm also not an academic and like there's something that's neat to me about plays generally where you yeah, you go into this room with a bunch of strangers not knowing anything about the thing that you're about to see, mm -hmm. potentially. And like, you're with all of these strangers that have like really different backgrounds, different education levels, different like life contexts. And that you like all have a similar understanding of this like thing after being together for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And it just is like sort of magical mm -hmm. in that way. And mm -hmm. so like, you can have a really complicated conversation with a group of strangers um, sort of effortlessly by like having people go with you through a narrative and so I feel like that is like something that I like that's like why plays exist <laughs> to mm -hmm. me yeah that shared experience that's yeah. everything yeah. yeah and like it can be like an empathetic thing mm -hmm. and an intellectual thing hopefully it's always both like mm -hmm. hopefully you're like I've never thought that way before about mm. that kind of a person or like now, like I've I've seen someone like that, but I've never experienced or like imagined their inner life, like, or I've never like thought about capitalism that way before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it could be all of that, and that's amazing. So, if you were to give advice to your younger self, or mm -hmm. possibly aspiring artists, playwrights who might be watching this program, would you have any advice for them? If I were to give advice to my younger self, I would say stop acting. Oh my god. <laughs> You're so bad at it. <laughs> okay. um, and also like, or I guess conversely, like keep acting uh -huh. just because you're uh, taller than the boys and <laughs> like don't have a good sassy black woman voice uh -huh. doesn't mean you won't have a career. Uh -huh. um, I guess, but like in terms of like advice, like, if you think something is bad, it is. Like, I feel like that's like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in every way, like if you're like, oh, this feels sketchy, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, trust like your inner voice and mm -hmm. like it can, like you can still make things better. Like if you think that your writing is bad, it might be, but it, that doesn't mean it's gonna be bad forever. Mm -hmm. um, but like, trust your, trust, have, like give um, your inner critic some credit and like give your like aesthetic, like, isn't there something, this is so <laughs> cheesy, but uh, isn't there's like a thing where it's like your sense of like artistic aesthetic mm -hmm. develops before your ability to do yes. that thing? Yes, yes, that like, is, there's like I can't a believe, thing. no, I know, I can't believe you actually brought that up because I was literally thinking that before you said it. You know? Yeah, the, the Ira Glass had a, a thing yes. about that. Yes, yeah. that's who it was. Oh, I'm quoting Ira Glass. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Recommendation. <laughs> so if you have anything you'd like to recommend, this is a recommendation show, anything at all. Yeah, you can right. give it to the middle camera, you can give it to the close-up camera. I um, mean, you can recommend whatever you want to an audience. I, okay. I, I feel like I have like a bunch of recommendations go, and I'm not go, sure which one fine. is the right go one. Go all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my first recommendation is um, to buy fancy bread and slice it and put it in the freezer Ooh. because it makes your weeknight dinners more special. Oh, that's a great idea. Like get a baguette, uh -huh. slice it up, yeah. uh -huh. then you just you just put it in the toaster uh -huh. and then it, it can turn like just like some roasted vegetables and an egg into a beautiful French experience. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Am I in like, Paris? Yeah, buy like four <laughs> baguettes at once. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially Ooh. if they're on sale. Uh -huh. That's brilliant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So that's like one real great. recommendation. Great, great. And then I feel like the other one that I have is from Taking the Car Here, which is three. So Hot 97 on Friday <laughs> is like a joy. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. We have like a little bit of like 
There was some Ja Rule. <laughs> wow. There was, like, there were like, kick, like it was, yeah, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. like, so back. Mm -hmm. um, like, um, times a million. Uh -huh. mm. There was like, I never knew there was a love like this before. Uh -huh. That one, what's your zodiac sign? That guy, um, <laughs> his marquee. It was wow. like, I, I was like, oh, like I forgot about these. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like my middle school uh -huh. dance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Come to Damn. life radio. So wow. like, listen to the radio. Yeah. Um, and go to the Queens Museum. Yeah. It's a Queen wonderful museum. museum. You were right across the street from Flushing Corona Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful a lovely, park. beautiful park. There are beautiful families. There are different events. Mm -hmm. Go to museums not in Manhattan. They are yes. wonderful and worth visiting. Those are my recommendations. Those are amazing. That's dope. Those are amazing yeah. recommendations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you for being on the show. Thank you so much for coming on to our Yay. show. I wish I had more wine. I'm gone. Oh, yeah. sorry. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like raggedy ass cheers. <laughs>